We've talked previously about the conceptual definition of entropy change as energy dispersal, and in this video, I want to shed more light on the actual nature of entropy by talking about the statistical definition of entropy itself. Before we dive in and start talking about the statistical definition of entropy, we need to draw a distinction between the microstate of a thermodynamic system and its macrostate. The microstate consists of all of the positions and velocities, the microscopic positions and velocities of all of the particles within the system. So for example, for an ideal gas, if we were to sample or take a photo of an ideal gas system over time, we would see the particles with different positions and different velocities pretty much in every snapshot. One important thing to recognize about microstates, especially as you go on into more advanced coursework, is that microstates are quantized. According to quantum mechanics, there are discrete energy levels that particles are allowed to access. That leads to discrete velocities and even, in a sense, discrete positions accessible to the particles within a quantum system. That means that the number of possible microstates is finite, since the number of states accessible is finite. The macrostate corresponds to the bulk thermodynamic macroscopic state functions for the system. Examples of these are pressure, volume, temperature, internal energy, and entropy, for example, and there are other examples that we've talked about as well, such as enthalpy. In the introductory videos, we saw the idea that the macrostate functions, internal energy, for example, are equal to averages over the microstate. Microscopic energies are averaged to calculate the observed macrostate internal energy, U, for example. This idea is going to become important in a second. The statistical definition of entropy deals with the question of how random are the possible microstates for a system given a particular macrostate. So how random are, for example, three possible microstates that a system could access, little s1, little s2, and little s3, given a particular macrostate, capital or big S? Well, let's think first about a hypothetical example where the microstate s1 has a probability of 1, while the probabilities of the second and third possible microstates are both 0. Well, in this case, we know exactly the microstate of the system. Essentially, you can think of it like the particles of the system are frozen in space. They're not moving, so they have zero velocity, and we know their positions exactly, and so no other possible microstates can exist. There's no randomness in a system like this, and so the entropy is zero. When there's zero randomness in the possible microstates, entropy is equal to zero. Let's look at a different probability distribution for the possible microstates. Let's imagine now that all of the probabilities were equal. So the three microstates had probabilities of 0.3 repeating each. Well, in this case, we can't really know which microstate the system is actually in, since all three are equally probable. And in this case, the entropy is at a maximum, and the randomness of the microstates is at a maximum, since we can't really know without sampling which microstate the system is actually in. Clearly, the probability distribution over the microstates, in other words, what probability does each microstate have for all the possibilities, figures deeply into the statistical definition of entropy. And for the remainder of this video, what, what we want to do is flesh out this relationship mathematically. Stated bluntly, how are entropy and the individual probabilities of specific microstates related? In general, there are a very, very large number of possible accessible microstates, for example, for an ideal gas system, and the number becomes explosive as you start adding particles and increasing volume. But one thing we can say, drawing an analogy from, for example, internal energy, is that the observed macroscopic entropy has got to be a weighted average over some function of these probabilities. It remains to be determined what that function actually is, but in writing this equation in the bottom right, what we're doing is using, for example, the weighted average of internal energy as an analogy. To find the average internal energy, we weight each microscopic energy by its probability of existing. The sum over all of those is equal to the average internal energy. Similarly with entropy, what we can do 
is multiply some function of the probabilities. We don't quite know what that is yet, but you can think of that as the microscopic entropy, the entropy per microstate. We multiply that by the probability of that microstate existing and sum over all the possible microstates to get the average entropy that we would observe macroscopically. So now we need to figure out the nature of this function f of the pi, the function of the probabilities of the specific microstates existing that relates back to entropy. One place to start is this idea that the macroscopic entropy must be a weighted sum of this function of the probabilities, each f of pi weighted by the corresponding probability p sub i. To flesh out this in more detail, let's think about bolting two independent systems A and B together. This is actually a common device in thermodynamics for learning more about thermodynamic state functions. So for example, let's say we took two ideal gases, you might be getting sick of seeing the ideal gas by now, I know I am, and bolting the two of them together. Now ideal gases don't interact, so the systems A and B are independent, and the particles within the system are still independent in the combined system A plus B. Let's imagine that we had m accessible microstates in system A, each with a set of probabilities, p sub i, so each of the m microstates has its own probability, p sub i, and in system B, we had n possible microstates, each of which has a probability, p sub j. How many total microstates are there for the combined system A plus B? Well, we can't simply add the microstates and say m plus n because the two sets are independent and so for a particular microstate of system A, let's call it I, there are n possible microstates of system B. And so what we're looking for here is not addition but multiplication. The total number of microstates in the combined system is the product of the two, not the sum. What's the probability of a kind of composite microstate in which system a is in state I and system B is in state J. Well, here again, we need to multiply the two probabilities since the two systems are independent and the particles remain independent in the combined systems. The probability of a particular microstate in the combined system in terms of the original probabilities is PI times PJ. Now what about the entropy of the combined system A plus B? Well, for one thing, we can use the equation in the top right. Now that we know the probability of a particular composite microstate, we can just sum over all those possible combined microstates. So we sum over the m for system A and the n for system B and do a weighted average of f of the probabilities. So the probabilities are now pi times pj, and so f of pi times pj times the probability pi pj added up over all the possible microstates is equal to the entropy. This is just an incarnation of that equation in the top right where we've replaced p sub i in that top right equation with p i p j, the new probability of the composite microstate in the combined system. There's one other thing we should notice about the entropy of the combined system A plus B and it's that if we think back to our conceptual or intuitive notions of entropy should be extensive. That means when we bolt two systems together, when, when we combine system A and system B, the resulting entropy of the combination should be the sum of the two entropies. What we can do then is write the entropy of system A as the sum over the m possible microstates for that system, pi, f of pi, and add to that the entropy of system B, the sum over the n microstates, p sub j, f of p sub j. So look at these two equations. They're related to each other. The entropy is equal to the sum over the two separate entropies and a sum over the composite microstates. When you combine these equations with one another and do some mathematical manipulations, you ultimately arrive at the idea that f of the product of two probabilities must be equal to the sum of f for those individual probabilities. So f of pi times pj must be equal to f of pi plus f of pj. Of course, the only function for which this works is the natural log. And so we now know then, using that equation in the top right, how entropy relates to the individual probabilities. We can say s is equal to the sum over all the possible microstates, the probability of that microstate times the natural log of the probability of that microstate.
In practice, this is multiplied by a constant, Boltzmann's constant, and it's negated since the probabilities will be less than one and the natural logs will be negative. The negation ensures that entropy remains positive. So this is Boltzmann's statistical definition of entropy, just reproduced from the last sli slide, and it says that entropy is equal to negative Boltzmann's constant times the sum over all the possible capital N microstates now, the probability of that microstate times the natural log of the probability of that microstate. And this is a pretty neat concept, actually. You can relate Boltzmann's statistical definition back to thermodynamic quantities like heat and temperature and figure out some pretty in interesting things about spontaneous processes. For the time being, I want to explore in more detail this second factor, this sum over all the possible microstates, pi natural log of pi. What is this exactly? What does it mean? And can we recast this equation in a somewhat more intuitive form? In particular, it's a little bit problematic to get, for example, the probability distribution over all the possible microstates. When there are millions upon billions upon billions of possible microstates, that probability distribution becomes simply unwieldy to deal with, especially if you're talking about a quantized or discrete distribution. You're talking about billions upon billions upon billions of numbers. Well, one thing we can do to simplify this distribution is to move the pi factor inside of the natural log. Moving p sub i inside the natural log puts it as an exponent on pi, so we've got the sum over all the possible microstates, the natural log of p sub i to the power of p sub i. Now, if we blow this sum up and write it as natural log of pi to the pi for each term in the sum, we get the natural log of p1 to the p1 power, natural log of p2 to the p2 power, plus the natural log of p3 to the p3 power, etc., etc., etc. And the sum of a set of natural logs is equal to the natural log of the product, right? And so we can pile all those terms into a single natural logarithm and say that this sum is equal to the natural logarithm of p1 to the p1 power times p2 to the p2 power times p3 to the p3 power. Now let's do something a little funky and plug this back in to the original definition of entropy, but invert the argument of the natural logarithm such that a negative sign pops out front. Doing this, the negative sign in the original equation is removed since we're multiplying a negative times a negative, and the argument of the natural logarithm is inverted. So we get the entropy is equal to Boltzmann's constant times the natural log of 1 over now p1 to the p1 power, p2 to the p2 power, etc., 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 all the way to the last microstate, p sub n to the p sub n power. This argument of the natural logarithm is naturally, if you look at it, going to be a very, very large number. If we have a lot of accessible microstates, each of the probabilities is going to be quite low, and this number is going to be very, very large. This is a number called w, and it corresponds to the number of distinct microstates that lead to a particular or given macro state. This is a more intuitive number to work with, and I hope to demonstrate this to you with a quick example. Really quickly though, before we do that, that example, notice that we can now rewrite Boltzmann's definition of entropy in the top left as S is equal to positive Boltzmann's constant times the natural log of W. By thinking statistically and thinking in terms of combinatorics, we can often write down a number for W, or at least relative W values for two situations, for example, an initial and a final state. So consider the following scenario. You've got a box with six compartments in it, and you start out with an ideal gas confined to one of those compartments with a volume V. All the compartments have equal volume, and so imagine, for example, you remove the inner walls so that the gas molecules were free to roam the entirety of the container, and you had a situation where when you expanded the gas to 6V, the 12 particles, count them, there are 12 particles in that ideal gas, spread themselves out so that there are two particles in each sixth of the box. What's W for each of these situations? Well, to figure out W, you can think about the probability of a particular particle existing within a particular box. In the case of the initial state with volume V, there's really only one way to prepare this microstate. We take all 12 particles of the ideal gas and throw them into the same box. The number of ways to do this is 12 things taken 12 at a time, or 12C12, which is equal to 1. 
Going back to our analogy from before, this situation completely lacks randomness. We can identify with certainty that all of the particles are in box one. Therefore, it makes sense that the entropy should be equal to zero, and indeed, it comes out that the entropy is equal to zero when we take the natural log of W equal to one, right? What happens when we allow the gas to expand to a volume of 6V? Well, now what we can do is imagine preparing this microstate by throwing two particles down into each box. The number of ways to do this is much, much larger than one because we start by taking, for example, two of the particles from the 12 and throwing them in the first box. And there are 12 C2, 12 things taken two at a time, ways to do that. We're then left with 10 and there are 10 C2 ways to throw two particles from the remaining 10 into the next box. We multiply that by the 12 C2, since these two events, throwing particles in box one and throwing particles in box two are independent, and we can continue going with this. So then we have eight particles left. So for box three, eight C2, for box four, six C2, box five, four C2, and finally for the last, last box, two C2, and with only two particles left, there's only one way to throw the remaining two particles into that last box. But nonetheless, if you go off and calculate, for example, 12C2 and 10C2 and 8C2, you'll see that the product of all of these is going to blow up to be an enormous, enormous number. Just like we saw for the case of the spontaneously mixing gases, a gas expanding like this corresponds to a very large change in entropy. It is worth noting a couple of things, though. First of all, the natural log of W is related to S, so W can grow exponentially and S will grow only linearly. And the other thing is that Boltzmann's constant is quite small, so very, very large changes in W can correspond to relatively small changes in S in, for example, joules per Kelvin. Nonetheless, this equation, S is equal to KB natural log of W, really captures the statistical definition of entropy at its essence. The definition says that the more microstates that correspond to a particular macrostate, the more different ways there are to prepare a particular macrostate, the higher is the entropy of that macrostate. And in this example, what we're seeing is there are simply more microstates associated with two particles in each hypothetical box than there are with all 12 particles in a single box. That's why expanding the gas from V to 6V corresponds to a, an increase in S and a massive increase in W, the number of possible microstates.